Leonid Stanislavski is the oldest active tennis player in the world, according to the Guinness Book of Records, and he is 98 years old. Nobody, not even Alexander Zverev, can surpass this experience. During the Davis Cup week in Hamburg preparations, the German number one found some time to hit a few balls with the Ukrainian senior, who holds the world record. Zverev made a very kind gesture. We've got more on this for you. First off, Stanislavski and Zverev have a hit. The 98-year-old Ukrainian, Leonid Stanislavski, who is recognized as the oldest tennis player in the world and is a tremendously popular figure on the ITF World Tennis Masters Tour, and Zverev had a hit on Saturday. In fact, Stanislavski has drawn crowds wherever he goes since Russia invaded Ukraine in February. Along with all Ukrainian athletes who play on while war rages at home, Stanislavski has emerged as a symbol of optimism and defiance. Stanislavski remained in his Kharkiv home, where he had lived for more than 60 years in the weeks following Russia's incursion into Ukraine. And he made a promise that since he had survived World War II, he would also survive the current fight. Stanislavski took the agonizing decision to depart Ukraine and find safety as the carnage and destruction increased. At one point, he said that the sound of explosions were all over. It was a difficult voyage, but the elderly man eventually reached Tanya, his daughter, in Lublin, Poland, after making it to the Slovakian border. Since then, he has spent time in Lithuania, and he now counts Zverev among his admirers. Zverev remarked that playing with Leonid was really special. He further said that their play demonstrates how tennis can be enjoyed at any age and still be a lot of fun. Zverev mentioned that he was glad that Leonid came here after what he has been through, and it was nice to see him enjoy himself. Next up, why has Zverev been out of action? After sustaining ankle ligament damage during his semi-final matchup with Rafael Nadal at Roland Garros in June, Zverev has not participated in any competitive matches since. The injury left him afflicted and in excruciating pain. The 25-year-old, who won the men's singles gold medal at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, afterward experienced a protracted period of injury recovery and was unable to compete in this month's US Open. He is now ready to make a comeback in the colors of his country though. After withdrawing from the US Open, Zverev said that the recuperation is going incredibly well and he's very content with his current situation. But regrettably, he can't visit New York this year. Although it was a hard choice for him, he doesn't want to take the chance and play a best of five set match as his first match back, given how well his recovery is going. Zverev has said that he'll be watching from a distance and obviously he'll miss it. He regrets not having another week or two where he would have been completely prepared, but it is what it is. He is looking forward to meeting everyone at the Davis Cup. In addition, he's eager to return as soon as he can. In Group C, Germany won't have it easy, and it remains to be seen whether Zverev can lead his nation beyond the group stage and into the knockout round. Zverev hasn't competed recently, so it can take him some time to find his best form. Now, when will we see more of Zverev? Alexander Zverev of Germany may have skipped the Davis Cup by Rakuten finals if it had been held anywhere else on Earth, but it is being held in his hometown of Hamburg. Zverev was in excellent form during his final Davis Cup match, a qualifier in Rio de Janeiro in March, where his two singles victories helped Germany defeat Brazil and earn a spot in the 2022 finals. They will now compete against France, Australia, and Belgium in the finals group stage, which will begin on Tuesday and span four European locations, Hamburg, Bologna, Valencia, and Glasgow. The top two teams from each of the four groups will advance to the tournament's quarterfinals. The knockout stage will take place in Malaga from November 22nd through November 27th. Germany has won the Davis Cup three times, but not since 1993, which was four years before Zverev was even born. Nevertheless, someone who was undoubtedly alive in 1993 has been a part of this week's preparations for Zverev. Moving on, Stanislavski, a true tennis legend. The Ukrainian has continued to pursue his love of tennis, despite the lack of competitors in his age group. Despite his on-court slowness, he participates in a number of world and European championships. At the age of 30, Leonid Stanislavski was introduced to tennis by a friend. Since then, he has been working out three times per week in his native Kharkiv, Ukraine. He currently holds the record for being the oldest tennis player, and he is preparing for the Mallorca, Spain-hosted Super Seniors World Championship.
championship in 2021. Tennis is an elegant sport, according to Leonid Stanislavski, who also feels that anyone can play it. He claims that it's a classy kind of sport. It is an excellent form of exercise, and it's a beautiful game. Another perk of tennis is that it can be played by anyone, regardless of age. Stanislavski revealed that his long life is the result of a combination of genes and sports. He also loves swimming as much as he loves tennis. Moreover, he claims that he felt considerably better at 95 years old than he does now. It is significantly more difficult to walk when you are 97 years old. Lastly, the International Tennis Federation's response to Stanislavski. Stanislavski filed a written appeal to the authorities, and the International Tennis Federation responded by creating a new age category for those above 90 for the competitions in 2021. Stanislavski said he enjoys every day of life and hopes to live for 100 years. Future confrontation with Roger Federer is his ultimate goal. Now, moving on to other news. First up, Roger Federer retires. Backhands were cut to perfection. Forehand winners flowed past desperate lunges, and cross-court volleys were played with inch-perfect precision. Federer had a repertoire fit for a magician, a wave to the crowd, a fist pump, and a hint of a smile, little noise, and little sweat. The juggernaut continued to roll as it won Grand Slam after Grand Slam. After all, he is known as Federer Express for a reason. How kind he was to the teenage me was a little enraging. Federer was more of a guy than a machine, though. He showed how one may be both strong and vulnerable. The 41-year-old will now be a member of the retirement club of tennis legends, joining Serena Williams, 40, who played her farewell match at the US Open earlier this month. Just a few weeks apart, they both retired, signaling the end of an era. Federer's last three years have been plagued by injuries and surgery. He has played more than 1,500 games in 24 years. The suffering and retribution are only imaginable. Next, during the opening round of the Labor Cup, a protester lights his arm on fire. A protester approached the court during the match between Stefano Tsitsipas and Diego Schwartzman on the first day of the Labor Cup at the O2 Arena in London and set his arm on fire. The protester entered the court after Tsitsipas won the opening set while sporting a jersey that stated in capital letters and UK private jets. He sat inside the service box and poured something on his right arm, lighting it with a lighter. A security guard had to put out a tiny fire that had started on the court surface after a protester accidentally dropped some liquid on it and aggressively shook his arm to put out the fire. The protester appeared to be unharmed after being escorted from the court and was briefly detained by security personnel in a hallway by the court door. The protester is thought to be a representative of Sacrifice for Survival, a climate emergency protest movement whose supporters previously set themselves on fire every day in an effort to halt flights within the United Kingdom. After the protester left, the court was clean, and Tsitsipas met with the umpire to make sure the court was in good enough condition before agreeing to resume play. Lastly, Tsitsipas increases the lead of Team Europe. Stefano Tsitsipas increased Team Europe's lead at the Labor Cup on Friday, defeating Team World's Diego Schwartzman 6-2, 6-1 in London. The Greek appeared in charge in front of a large audience at the O2, dominating the Argentine with a forceful forehand to give his team a 2-0 advantage over Team World. After 77 minutes, Tsitsipas secured the game with 17 goals and just six unforced errors. The world number six is now 4-2 in his ATP head-to-head -head series versus Schwartzman and has won each of his three matches thus far at the Labor Cup. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on the oldie and German hitting it off? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.